Good morning. This talk is on multivariable system properties and looks at the control of systems with more than one input and more than one output. And the topics we're going to be looking at are state space equations, multivariable block diagrams, multivariable poles, multivariable zeros, how to calculate multivariable poles and zeros, functional controllability, and minimal state space realizations. If we start off, multivariable systems can be represented as block diagrams, but also as state space equations um, using our, our classical state space. The difference is now our A matrix essentially remains the same, but the B now, rather than having a single column, can now have multiple columns to represent different inputs. This could represent input one, input two and input three. Just like so we could have input vector now, u1, u2, u3 as the u here. Similarly, we could have more than one output and they're represented by rows. So this row could represent y1 and this row could represent y2. In most cases, the d is going to be zero uh, and it's the, the size of d as well as the number of uh, outputs by the number of inputs. So that's a the reason this is more important is not so much for our analysis, but when we want to put this equations into MATLAB, it needs to know the D as well. So it's mostly sort of a MATLAB feature this. In most cases, we just forget about this. But because MATLAB needs the D, we have to know about it as well. Now, let's have a look. Say we were going back to our multivariable system here now. We might want to work out what the multivariable transfer functions look like. In this case now, we get a multivariable transfer function matrix. That's a matrix of transfer functions. And a classical relationship between state space and transfer functions still works in the sense that GS is C into SI minus A to minus 1B plus D. And in this case, because we've got three inputs and two outputs, we'll have six transfer functions. Three times two is six. And we'd label the first one G11, G12, G13, indicating this row 1, column 1, column 2, column 3. This would be row 2, so it's G2, column 1, so it's G21, column 2, row 2, G22, column 2, row 3, G23. And we could then potentially work out now what each of these separate transfer functions is to give us our multivariable transfer functions using this expression here. So one of the things we'll be looking at is how to go from state space to transfer functions and also how to go from transfer functions back to state space. So, so we've got an, we can go from flip to one, from one type of analysis to another as it suits us. So here coming back to this is our um, state space representation, A, B, C, and D, and this would be our transfer function representation. Now, the calculations are quite complex because they involve this term here. So we're best handing this problem over to MATLAB. So we could enter in A, and B, and C, and D, in our standard ways of entering date matrices. Put this one is SS, a, B, C, D, which would tell us MATLAB that was the state space representation. And then we can use the TF command, but this time, if we put SIS1 in here, we can put in here now the individual transfer function that we want to find. So if we want to find out this one here, which is the 1, 1, we could put 1, 1 in there, and then that would give us that transfer function. If we wanted to find out, let's say, 2, 3, we could go back to this and put 2, 3 in here. So using this now, we could work out all the individual transfer functions quite efficiently. If we try to do this by hand, we could do it, but it would be very time consuming. And potentially we could make mistakes as well. So that gives us a nice way now of going, if we've got some state space equations, we can work out now using MATLAB the individual transfer functions. So. One of the things that's interesting about this, I suppose, is this in this format here, it looks fairly understandable, not too onerous. 
just a bit slight extension of our classical state space. Whereas in transfer function form, it looks pretty horrendous. We've got six transfer functions here. They've all got all sorts of things going on in here. So in general, analysis in multivariable control system is done in state space format rather than in block diagram format. Although that's not always the case, but in nine times out of 10, it's easier to do it in state space. If we were to do block diagram representations, we have to be careful now because say one times two is the same as two times one in scalar case. This is not the same as in the matrix case. So you've got matrix A times B is not the same as B times A. So because these are matrices now, we have to be careful with the order, preserving order of multiplications. And so this variable here, y, will be given by this times this. So y will be given by g22 times something. And this variable here will be given by this by this. So this goes in at the back end, which means it goes in the back end here. So if we've got some block diagram 1, 2, the actual transfer function is 2 times 1, not 1 times 2. So remember now, in multivariable block diagram analysis, everything appears in reverse order to what you see in your diagram here. If you don't do that, your, all your calculations go completely wrong. If it's a, a, a parallel interconnection, obviously this plus this is the same as this plus this, A plus B is the same as B plus A in matrices, so it doesn't really matter. Um, if we can at, look at closed loop block diagrams, then again, it'll be this times this is the open loop block diagram times this. And then if we expand this out, then we can rearrange it and it'll come out as the closed loop system comes out as one plus G2, G1, not G1, G2 to the minus one times G2, G1 times U. So this is essentially the closed loop transfer function, which looks remarkably the same as the single input, single output close the transfer function, but this time the ordering of these is important. That's the only thing. Bear in mind the ordering of these. These also have to go into a reverse order of what you see them here. Um, just through a matrix analysis really. So nothing complicated, but if you get it wrong, obviously it goes wrong. Now, multivariable cobalt poles. So poles are also associated with the A matrix. And in the classical state space analysis, to get the poles, it's simply determinant of SI minus A equals naught. And so, because the A matrix is independent of the uh, number of inputs and number of outputs, it's a square matrix. And we can work out the poles of this or the eigenvalues, it's the same thing. The poles of the eigenvalues of the A matrix are the same for single input and single out and output systems as the same for multivariable. So just if we work out the eigenvalues of A through a determinant of SI minus A equals naught, we get the multivariable poles. So multivariable poles, very straightforward to work out. Uh, and so if we've got an example here, here's the A matrix here. So if we work out determinant of SI minus A, if we type, type in the A matrix, type in eig of A, then we get the eigenvalues as the poles. And here we've got the three poles, one at minus three, minus one at one, and one at minus two. It's not obvious from this, obviously, where they are, because eigenvalues are tricky to extract from a matrix, unless it's a diagonal matrix, in which case, if it's a diagonal matrix, they are the eigenvalues. Now, the next one to come to is multivariable zeros. Now, zeros are a bit more complicated. So the definition of a zero from a multivariable perspective is uh, where the input u is not zero, but the output y is zero. So this seems a bit strange at first. You've got some input to the system, which is non-zero, but the output is zero. And um, we can define this as, you say we've got state space equations x dot as x plus bu. We could write that as, um, if we take the Laplace variable, it becomes si minus a minus b, si minus a times x, plus minus b is equal to zero. And then we also know that y equals cx has to equal to zero, so therefore c times x has to equal to zero. So y equals cx, but we've set now y as zero. So we've got c times x 
plus 0 times u is equal to y, but we want y to be 0. In other words, this is a 0 here. So we've got 0, 0 now in here for the, for the zeros because y is 0, but this term here now is not 0. So to analyze this problem, um, we can deploy something called Scher's formula. He's a German mathematician who realized if we got some matrices A, B, C, D, and we wanted to work out the determinant of the this matrix, we could subdivide it into four parts. So the determinant of this matrix is given by determinant of A minus determinant of D minus C, A to the minus 1B, uh, where those matrices have those effects there. We can apply this now to this matrix here. So the first part is A, which is this term here, which is determinant of SI minus A into D. Now D is zero, so that disappears. There's minus, there's C. So the C is the same as the C, so it becomes a C. A is SI minus A times minus B. So the minus times minus becomes a plus, and that becomes C into SI minus A to the minus one B. So this gives us an expression now for the zero ZS it's this term here times this term here. Now, if we look at this in a bit more detail, uh, so ZS is the determinant of this, which is SI minus A times determinant of C into SI minus A to minus 1B. Now, this part here, which has got the poles, so ZS is the poles, and this part here is the transfer function GS. So from that, we can say that determinant of GS is simply ZS over PS. This now has a good relationship now back to our single input, single output system, where clearly GS is ZS over PS. So in the multivariable case, we have to take the determinant of GS to get the multivariable poles and zeros. And this now is a very powerful expression for calculating the zeros and poles of a multivariable system. And we could do it another way as well using MATLAB. Um, if we set up this matrix here, SI minus A, uh, this one here, um, MATLAB has a eigenvalue routine for where this part here is zero. And the eigenvalues of this will be the zeros as well, because it's the solution when this is equal to, when Y is zero, this becomes zero, this becomes an eigenvalue problem. And But this is a slightly strange eigenvalue problem, because normally you don't have a zero here, we have an SI in there. So this can be done by using the command i of m, where m is this matrix here. That's uh, si minus a minus bc. And we choose ig as the size of this matrix here. That will work as another way of working out the zeros using, using MATLAB. So let's have a look at the example now. Here we've got multiple transfer function matrix, and we want to work out the poles and the zeros. Now the zeros are not these terms here, not say not that's not the zero. Some of these will form the poles, but not all of them are. So we've not got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven poles probably in the system. We've got less poles than that. So if we work out now, we know that determinant of GS is ZS over PS. So we say this times this minus that times that is equal to ZS over PS. So get ZS over PS. It's this times this, which is that term there, minus that times that, which gives us this. We can then rationalize this and then bring the terms together, factorize, and we get this term here. So we can look now, this system has got one, two, three, four poles at two, three, minus two, minus three, minus four, and minus six, and one zero at minus eight. Because so if we can equate that to naught, get the zeros, equate this to naught, get the poles. So here we have a multivariable system now, and you can see the number, it's only got four poles, in fact, and it's got a zero, but the zero S minus eight is not obvious from this at all. You just cannot see it. So this is this little, this expression here now, gives us a very powerful way of working out multivariable poles and zeros. Right, so the second part of our talk is on multivariable state space equations. And one of the things that we want to try and do 
is to make sure we get what's called a minimal realization. This is the smallest possible state space we could have. Now we could convert this into a state space, that into a state space, that into a state space, and that into its own state space. And we'd have got a seven state model. But if we went back to our previous little analysis, we knew there are only actually four states in this. So we would have over-parameterized the system by three states. That means there'd be potentially three pole zero cancellations somewhere in our state space equations. The system wouldn't be controllable or observable. And if we used it for design purposes, could lead us into tri tricky situations. So the position on this was sorted out by Gilbert Strang, a mathematician uh, who came up with an algorithm, which is then called Gilbert's algorithm, to, to obtain minimal state space realizations. And his thinking was based on working out the rank of a matrix and producing a modal form of state space equations. And by combining these two ideas of rank and modal form, he then gives us a, a technique for obtaining a minimal state space realization. Now, you might not have come across the term rank before, so it's worth considering what a rank of a matrix is. Um, and the rank of a matrix is the number of either linearly independent rows in the matrix or linearly independent columns in the matrix. So if we have a look at what, what that means in terms of matrices, um, Imagine now that we've got this matrix here, and here we have um, 2, 3, 4, 4, 6, 8. So these two rows now are not linearly independent. So because they're not linearly independent, this matrix only has, this one's linearly independent to this, so it only has rank 2. This matrix here has if we look down this way and this way, this one is double this one. So this one's this one's double this one. So this one, the matrices are not linearly depend, independent on a column basis. And so um, this idea of rank now is important in matrices. And the idea is really that you've got linearly independence of the rows and columns within a matrix. If they're both linearly independent in row and column, then the matrix is said to be of full rank. Interestingly enough, if you have a, if this is a C matrix and it's got linearly dependent rows, you've probably got an observability problem. Whereas this one's got linearly independent columns, so this is going to give you a controllability problem. So that's a sort of an interesting sort of feature of these matrices if you apply them to the C or the B in your state space equations. Um, the simpler way of considering rank as well, though, is just to look at the determinant of the matrix. So if we've got a matrix which has got either linearly dependent rows or columns, the determinant of the matrix will be zero. So this is another simpler possibly check we can do in a matrix just to check its rank. If its determinant is zero, then that implies it's not a full rank. In other words, it's got either a linearly dependent column or a linearly dependent row. And so um, we can look then between the comparison between determinant and rank as a measure of linearly independence. Determinant is a real number, whereas a rank is an integer. Um, determinants are only defined for square matrices, where rank can be defined for rectangular matrices. Um, Non-zero determinant implies the existence of an inverse. Um, when the determinant is zero, we know that the matrix is has got linearly dependent rows and columns. The problem with the determinant is, let's say the determinant comes out as being very small, say the determinant comes out as 0.01, it's still non-zero, but that, but in the rank equations, it would, the rank would still be three, but 
there's a technique for cal calculating the rank and uh, one of them is called singular value decomposition and then we get a set of singular values and if those singular values are small indicates that their rank isn't really there just like the determinant when the determinant is small it indicates maybe the rank isn't there really um, so you could have a matrix which is close to being losing its rank which would imply a small determinant or a small singular value now so so we've got the idea of rank now which we're going to go back to gilbert's algorithm so he's got an idea of rank of a matrix and then he needed a way of representing the matrix so, so he could build up a, a rank sort of problem out of it now one of the techniques for obtaining state space equations in single input single output is to go for a diagonal a matrix now with a diagonal a matrix what we do is we split the transfer function up into partial fractions we put these numbers here the poles down the main diagonal and everything else is zeros and then we know this first number here times this first number here has to equal to that number there then that one there times that as equal to that so if we fill this up with ones then these become the partial fraction coefficients we could have done it the other way we could have filled the ones up along here and then they would have become the partial fraction coefficients of as you know in multi in state space we have multiple things but the main point is that that number there times that number there has got to go to that that number there times that number there's got to go to that and that last number times that number would have to equal to that and this would give you a state space representation now of the system um, in a single input single output so we can now try and apply this now so there's our classical single input single output state space and these are our if we went to prove it if you if you go back from these equations you'll find you'll using this expression you'll find you go to here so if you use these expressions in there you'll go to that so that that's like your little proof for it if you like if we've got a multivariable system now we can apply the same idea so we take the poles now i've got a pole at minus two a pole at minus three and a pole at minus four so we've got only got three poles in the system and a pole at minus six so i got four poles and then we could have a matrix now a square matrix here associated with the s plus two another square matrix associated with the s plus three another one with the s plus four and another one with the s plus six so we split this up now into a partial fraction form similar to this but these terms here now become matrices rather than scalars and those matrices we've defined here as r1 r2 r3 and r4 and we've given them little suffix as well to work them out now we can now using our standard partial fraction techniques we can work out all of these numbers and then what we can do is we work out the rank of these numbers and the rank of these then tells you how many of these you've got so this is if this is a rank one you get one of these but if this is a rank two you get two of those and then that gives tells you then how many of these poles you've got in the multivariable system and these matrices then can tell you what the coefficients of the matrices the b and c matrices are as well so this gave us an algorithm now for computing a minimal state space realization of a transfer function it involves working out um, which poles you've got in the system the pole only appears once down here and then these are square matrices and then you've got to calculate these matrices so the problem really is calculating the r1 r2 r3 and r4 this is relatively straightforward if we now multiply the transfer function by one of the poles which is they say the s plus two so we were working out the first one here now so you can multiply the transfer function by s plus two so you get s plus two times this s plus two times this and then evaluated at s is minus two so you'd get an s plus two here s plus two here and s plus two here but when you evaluate it as minus two these terms would disappear and that would just cancel giving you the s plus two times this is equal to this term here so that's what we've done here we multiplied s plus two by the transfer function evaluated at s is minus two and that gives us then this just the r1 matrix and then we can do is by putting s is minus two into this expression here that's s plus two times that over that we'll get this first number so the s plus two 
cancels with the s plus 2 and so we're going to get s plus 1 over s plus 3 evaluated at s is minus 2 so s is minus 2 that's minus 2 and 1 is minus 1 over minus 2 and 3 is 1 so 1 into minus 1 goes minus 1 then the next one is s plus 2 again so if we put s plus 2 in there so s plus 2 they cancel the, the s plus 2 cancels with this one so we get 6 and this s is minus 2 so it's minus 2 and 4 is 2 2 into 6 goes 3 the next one is again the s plus 2 comes here cancels with that so you get 1 over minus 2 plus 3 which is 1 now on this one the s plus 2 doesn't cancel so when you put s is minus 2 the top line is 0 so that becomes a 0 now if we look at the rank of this matrix now it's got a non-zero determinant because there's make the determinant this is minus 3 so therefore this has got rank 2 so the first one r1 now this is r1 and it has rank 2 and then go on to the next one now which is to work out the next one which is the s plus 3 times this to give us the r2 so we do the same trick now so we put s plus 3 so multiplied by this the s plus c cancel we put s is minus 3 into here and into there and that gives us 2 and we can do it for the other terms as well and this is what we get as the matrix 2 0 1 0 now this has got a zero determinant and therefore the rank of this is only one so you can see now how the partial fractions and the rank is beginning to sort of come together next one we do the s plus four so we multiply s plus four by this and put evaluate it as s minus four that first term will be zero that term will be zero as well but when we do this one we get the s plus four cancelling with the s plus four we put s is minus four in here so minus four and two it's minus two minus two and six minus three um, this term here the cancel plus four s plus four cancels so we get minus two over minus four plus six which is two two over two is one again this has only got rank one because naught this has got a zero determinant so this has got rank one we can do the same thing for the final one which is the minus six and this hasn't got a minus six in all that one or that one so all those are zeros when we put minus six in here they cancel so get two over minus six plus four which is minus two two over minus two minus one and again this has only got rank one so we can now having worked out now the r1 r2 and r3 and r4 we can start to do our calculations this is our state space representation now where we've got the c's and the b's but this time these c's and b's are matrices and the pi's are a certain number of poles down the main diagonal and in this case now the uh, size of this is equal to the rank of, ha of the matrix that we had so if r1 had rank 2 there'd be two things there if r1 only had rank 1 there'd only be one of those and the size of the state space is equal to the sum of the ranks of the different matrices so if we go back now to our matrices this one had rank 2 so that's 2 this had rank 1 so 2 and 1 is 3 this had rank 1 so 3 and 1 is 4 and this had rank 1 so 4 and 1 is 5 so we'd expect this to have a 5 the number of poles in it is 5 and because and and so then that gives us then this as our a matrix first one had rank 2 so we're going to get 2 minus 2s second one r1 only r2 so that r1 had rank 2 so it's two of them r2 only is rank 1 so it's 1 minus 3 r4 r3 had rank 1 so there's only 1 minus 4 and r4 had rank 1 so there's only 1 minus 6 so this is our a matrix so the a matrix just comes from the rank of the different r's and if it's got rank two it has two if it has rank one it's one and those are associated with minus twos those are associated with minus threes minus fours and minus six they were the three of the four calculations we did and then we also know now that the c and the b we can get that r1 or ri is cibi now we can choose anything we like for these so there's a again an infinite solution to these so for instance if we look at r1 here's r1 
So we now know that R1 is C1, B1. C is R1. So if we chose a C1 as this, then C1, B1 has to equal to this. So if this is I, this has to be the same as that because that times that gives us that. So we can choose these to be different things. We could have swapped those around if we want. That could have been I and that could have been this one here, but you've got a sort of choice here to make. Um, similarly, when we come to this one now, this is R2, so this is R2. Now we need to, um, this time it's only going to be a, because there's only one, uh, uh, this has only got rank one, this is only size one this way, and it's only size one this way. So we now need something, a two by one by one by two, which gives this. So I've put one zero in there, and then that'll become two one. So that times that gives you that, and that gives you C2 and B2. Similarly for the next one, R3, this is R3, and we know that this is going to be rank one. So it's going to be one, two by one, it's going to be one by two. And um, this times this has got to equal to this. So I've, I've, I've chosen naught one here, and then that fixes these to here. So that's my C3 and B3. I can do the same thing for R4, R4 rank one. So it's going to be a two by one by one by two. And then this times this has got to equal to this. So I've chosen that, that and that, that times that gives me this. So now what I can do now is I can form now the larger state space. This first part, this naught one, this part here is the C1. And that part there is the B1. This part here is the C2. And that part there is the B2. This part here is the C3. And this is the B3. And this is the C4. And that is the B4. So they've come from, from here. There's our, there's our, C1 and B1, there's our C2 and B2, there's our C3 and B3, there's our C4 and B4, and they've gone into these slots here now. And bingo, we've got our minimal state space realization. And if we wanted to check this, we could enter the A, the B, and the C, and the D into my lab, put CIS1 as SSABCD, and then we could pick up an individual transfer function then. So we could pick up, say, uh, number one one and that would come out as this and then we would we could go back to our original say um, transfer function matrix here and we could confirm now it's the same so it's s plus one s plus two s plus three and this one is s plus one or s plus two s plus three so we then know if we wanted to check that we've got our we've been able to go from transfer function to state space and then we use MATLAB to go back from state space to MATLAB uh, thing. So this is Gilbert's algorithm um, and it allows us now to Gilbert's algorithm and it's based on working out the uh, modal form of state space equations and using the rank of the matrix to decide on how many of the individual states we've got and it has the advantage now it gives us a minimal state space realization and it's based on the concept that we take the transfer function and we represent it as a series of partial fractions but the partial fractions now are matrices and those matrices we work out the rank for the rank of these matrices then tell us how much of these we've got and the r matrices themselves then give us the b's and the c's that go into this different slots in our state space equations and in the coming up video i'll be doing an example of this for you to show how you can then generate state space equations which are minimal, which means there's no pole zero cancellation, so it's got the minimum number of states in it, using Gilbert's algorithm. Hi, good afternoon. Today we're going to look at Gilbert's algorithm for working out the minimal state space realization of a multivariable transfer function. So we can recall back to the lectures on this, the first thing we do is we work out some matrices associated with each of the poles 
in the transfer function. So we start off with the s plus 1, and what we do is we work out s plus 1 multiplied by gs, evaluated at s is minus 1. And we can call this r1. So the first thing we do is to work out r1. So this is relatively straightforward. What we do is we cover up this one and put s as minus 1 here. So minus 1 and 4 is 3. 3 into 6 goes 2. So the first number we've got is a 2 there. Next one, we've got an s plus 1 here as well. So we kill this one up, put s as minus 1. Minus 1 and 2 is 1. 1 into 8 goes 8. So we put an 8 in there. Then onto this one, now there's no s plus 1 here, and therefore that term becomes 0. So we've got a 0 in there. And finally, we've got, we have got an s plus 1 here, so we cover that one up, put s as minus 1, so we get 10 over 9. So there's our first one done. Next one we can move on to is, let's say, the fourth. So we can now work out s plus 4. 4 times gs evaluated at s is minus 4. And this will give us r2. So we get r2, which will be another 2 by 2 matrix here. And so we go to here, put s as minus 4 in here. So minus 4 and 1 is minus 3. Minus 3 into 6 goes minus 2. We've got no 4s here, so therefore this one is going to be a zero. We have got a four here, that's to cut this up. Minus four and two is minus two. Minus two into four is minus two. And we haven't got any s's plus fours in here. So that one's going to be a zero. So we'll just remind ourselves, this was associated with s is minus one, and this is s is minus four. We can now move on to say the 2, so we can work out s plus 2 times gs divided by minus 1, this gives r3. This is s is minus 2. So we've got no minus 2s here, therefore this is a 0, and we've got, we have got a minus 2 here, so if we cover this one up, minus 2 and 1 is minus 1. Minus 1 into 8 goes minus 8. We have a minus 2 here as well, our 2, so cover that one up. So minus 2 and 4 is 2. 2 into 4 goes 2. And finally, we haven't got any s plus 2s here. Therefore, that is a 0. So we've now done the s plus 1. We've done the s plus 4, we've done the s plus 2. So the one remaining now is s plus 10. So now we're going to do 10 in there. And that is minus 10. And that's going to give us R4. So R4 now will be another 2 by 2 matrix. This corresponds to s is minus 10. Now, fortunately, we've got no 10s in there. So that one is a 0. And looking again, we've got no tens here. So that's also a zero. And we have no tens here. This is also a zero. But we have got a ten here. So we cover up the ten. But s is minus ten. So it's going to be minus ten and one is minus nine. So it's going to be minus ten over nine. So we've now gone from our multivariable transfer function to work out four matrices, R1, R2, R3, R4. Next thing we've got to do is work out the rank of these matrices. So the rank is the size of this largest non-zero determinant. So looking at this one now, this has got a two by two, so this is rank two. So this is rank equals two. This one, though, hasn't got a 2 by 2 determinant, it's only got a 1 by 1. This has got rank 1.
This one, on the other hand, has got that times that minus that times that. This is a two by two determinant, so it's got rank two. And finally, this one has only got rank one. So if we like, we could say, this has got rank two, this has got rank one, rank two and rank one. So if we add up the ranks now, that's two, three, four, five, six. So it's got a six, six rank which means that we can represent it with a uh, state space representation with a six by six state space. So if we rub some of these out, we need to keep these in. So just remember this is R1, R2, R3, and R4. And in here now, we will try to put in our state space equations. So we're going to have six states because it's rank six. So it's going to be x1 dot, x2 dot, x3 dot, x4 dot, x5 dot, x6 dot. Copy some matrix in here. Just got six things in. There's our six by six matrix. And here we have x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, and x6. And then here we'll have a B. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's our B, and that'll be multiplied by U1, U2 in there. Right, so now if we go back to our rank expressions. This has got rank 2 here, so it's going to be 2 minus 1s. So we're going to put in a minus 1 and a minus 1 in there. Next one though, so we've got rank 1, so it's only 1 minus 4. These numbers now go on the main diagonal. Next one, it's got rank two, so there's two minus twos. And finally, for 10, only rank one, minus 10. So there's our A matrix, relatively straightforward to get hold of, and it's a diagonal matrix. We can then put in our Y1 and Y2 expression as well. This is gonna be a two by six. multiplied by x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6. And the remaining task now is to find the numbers that go in the C matrix and the B matrix. Now, the first stage is we've got the minus ones, and there are two of those. So there's this little box here, which we're looking at. And that corresponds to this part here and this part here. So we know now that this two by two multiplied by that two by two has got to equal to this. So we can do that quite simply by putting this as a unit matrix. So unit matrix multiplied by this will give us this. So this will become two, eight, zero, ten over nine. So we know now that this matrix times that matrix gives us that matrix. The second one though is only one minus four. So this is just gonna be a, a one by one here, which is gonna be that one there and this one here. So now what we've got is we have a matrix that looks like this, um, multiplied by one that looks like that. So these two here, those two there, these two here, those two there. So this times this now has got to equal to this. So we can achieve that by putting, say, a one and a zero in there, and a minus two and a minus two in there. So multiply this matrix by that one, we would get this. 
So that's giving us minus two, minus two, and a one, zero. The next one is a two by two. This is the rank two one. So this one's going to be a straightforward one. Again, we can adopt the same approach that we used here, the unit matrix. So we can put a unit matrix in there. And then that multiplied, that's going to go to this two by two here to give us this two by two here. So a unit matrix times this to give us this. So that's obviously going to be naught minus eight, two, zero. So now the last one to do, which is a two, and you've got rank one this, so it's going to be a, a two, which is a two there, multiply that one, so it's going to be multiplied by this one. So it's going to be this times this has got to equal this. So we could do that by putting a naught in there and a one in there, and a naught in there, and a minus ten and a nine in there. Going by mistake. So if we put a naught one in here, and a naught ten over nine in there, then this now are the here's our original transfer function, and these now are state space equations with a minimal realization of this transfer function, and it's got six states in. In order to do it, just to recap, we work out the if one partial fraction matrices, R1 through to R4. We then work out the rank of the matrices. That tells us how many states we've got. And then we can then put those numbers of poles in the main diagonal. And then when we've done that, we make sure that the corresponding matrix down here times that one gives us the corresponding R over there. So, hope you found that useful and uh, wait for the next lecture.